Thanks for bringing us here, man. This place is, uh, this place is spectacular. This is, I was saying before, this is the kind of place that you fly over and you wonder what's going on down there because it's just doesn't, you don't feel like there's anything within, mm. you know, a thousand miles and we find ourselves in this isolated place. How did you find Wyoming? Why Wyoming? Why here? We recorded the last album in Jackson Hole mm. and I just been looking to get a place, but I, I, I've been looking to get a place here and I was looking for multi, a multi-thousand acre property. And Jackson Hole didn't have any properties available over 500 acres. Because mm. I was looking for a place to set up the Yeezy campus. Mm -hmm. So uh, we found out about Cody and we came here. And when I first got to the ranch, I was expecting something really green because that's what I was used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't like it when I first got here. And to Baron? Yes. But by the time I was, it was time to leave, I loved it. Mm. And I was like, wow, these are actually the Yeezy tones right here. <laughs> it's They're true. Actually, it's true. <laughs> it actually is the, the palette. Now that I'm thinking about that, that makes me kind of want to put the other jacket back on. I'm like, wow, <laughs> I want to wear. <laughs> the fleece is good. You look good. Yeah. The and the fleece just feels like, you know. It's in the Jesus is King palette. Oh, yeah, that makes it make sense also. You talked about easy and people wear fleece 10, 20 years from now. It's more of a future. Well, I wanted to ask you idea. about 20 years from now. You talked about Yeezy Camp. What is this place in 20 years? I have some visions, but the more that I'm in service to God, I just clear my head and just wake up more empty mm. every day and let and let God do the, the driving and just use me as he may. So, you, you, you know, you make plans and God laughs. So if I told you the plans, I could tell you what, what would happen six months from now, not 20 years from now. So we're, we're building farms. Here, because of the climate and because of the soil, mm. we're gonna have hydroponic cotton, wheat, hemp, and we're developing our own fabric. So we're gonna go from seed to sow, from mm -hmm. farm to table, so we can see the entire process. Full sustainability. Yes. Which is a concern for all of us, mm -hmm. but, but is present on your mind, the idea of a sustainable future. We gotta sustain, right? We do. Yeah, and for me, I know we're, it's an interview and we're doing talking, but the reason why I didn't want to say 20 years from now, but say six months mm. from now is, is, is really not about talking. It's about doing. Mm -hmm. So we are doing. We are in the process right now. I can, I can tell you what I'm doing. Anything else is just yeah, I got it. talk. You know, uh, I think the original plan was for you to, to use your interest in architecture and, and, and to build something that, that, that gave to the community and expanded into the community from, a, from Calabasas. Mm -hmm. And that didn't, that didn't manifest itself for one reason or another. Permits, was that the reason why it couldn't happen out in California? Well, it did manifest that I was able to see it get done. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was in California building my domes, mm -hmm. and they said my dome was 10 feet too high. <laughs> right. That, and they tore it down. That kind of semantic. But think about what they're saying. Mm. Kanye, your dome is mm. too high. Mm. We got to tear it down. Mm. So they came to me and said, you have to tear it down. But before I even had the opportunity, now mind you, this is on my own 300 acre property. Mm. Before I had the opportunity, they already went to press with it. Mm. To be like, and by the way, we're going to show everyone mm. and tell everyone that we're tearing down your dome. So what did that say to you at the time beyond the actual... <laughs> Actually, the 10 feet, what does the 10 feet say to you more than anything? It was the 10 extra seconds that it takes to get a like back mm. when you put something on Instagram, that extra waiting time. Mm. Slow yesing people and slowing people down is one of the most popular forms of control. How many times have you had an idea and you just get put in traffic through mm. the bureaucracy? Mm. 
So I don't deal with the traffic at all. Right. Any situation where I just be sitting waiting. I'm like, because it's power versus force. I'm not going to force anything. I do what I have the power mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And if I have to force it, then it's probably not a situation I need to be in. When I come here and I see the kind of world you're living in here and the kind of environment you, that, that, that you will create six months and beyond, I just wonder what, and, and the transformation you're going through as a human being, what a city like LA feels like when you go back. It feels a bit cramped for my mind. When you drove here, you didn't see a lot of extra no. noise. It was the road. It was nothing. And then just God. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you see all of the, the billboards, the, the traffic billboards. Yeah. When I say traffic, I'm talking about the billboards are actually sex trafficking. Because if a guy is arguing with his girl or something and went through something with his wife, and on one side of the street, there's a billboard for spirits, just alcohol. And on the other side, it's call this number, or it's a picture of a, a woman on a billboard that says, come to this strip club. Yeah. And he goes and he spends some money just to sit down and have someone to talk to him. At the end of the night, when they close up the club, they say, how much traffic did we have? So there's all different layers to trafficking. Like for me, Playboy was my gateway into full on pornography addiction. My dad had a Playboy left out at age five and it's affected almost every choice mm. I made for the rest of my life mm. from age five to now having to kick the habit. And it just presents itself in the open, like it's okay. And I stand up and say, you know, it's not okay. Yeah, you must be <laughs> incredibly aware now that you've yeah. got to a point where you, you are actively turning your back on the coping mechanisms that you've been using throughout your life, right? In order to function from that moment in time through to, when did you first start to acknowledge the idea of being born again and, and, and absorbing your faith whole, like completely, not just as a Christian walking through society, but actually like in servitude? When, when was that approximately? It was like approximately April. Okay. It was after Coachella. Yeah. You know, yeah. God was using me and it lined up amazing. Like literally the Sunday was Easter Sunday. Yeah. But I remember when the hair dye, you know, was placed on my head that morning before Coachella and it hit my head and it felt cold mm. and I didn't like it. I had an aversion to it. And then when the guy was dying it, I didn't even like how it came out. It had like too much white in it and the tone, it was like purple and white. And I was like, I don't like this but I had already planned to have like this purple, you know, uh, outfit and this purple hair dye. And, you know, I wouldn't have the, I wouldn't have the time to sit and do anything, you know, like that now, because I'm, you know, using my mind to build what we're building with farming, mm -hmm. what we're building, we're bringing manufacturing back to the States within the next two years, Yeezy's, you know, we're gonna bring them back to the States. Mm -hmm. We're creating factories where we have in injection molded shoes. We're gonna be hiring uh, people through the prison reform. Uh, I don't like to say the word system, uh, but second chance people. Mm. And just, you know, people gave up on manufacturing. I'm, I wanna, I'm talking about uh, the purple hair for a second. Go. But then I want to jump into how we had given up on manufacturing and said, let's just like manufacture overseas because it seemed like it was what was easier. Yeah. And for me as a founder, it's really important to bring these jobs, you know, back to, back to America. Why? I mean, more specifically, what, what affected you that, that part of the process of building easy offshore? Let's start creatively. I had this idea for a new boot that we did. And actually the design that we did is very similar to 
something that we now just saw in a Balenciaga show. So a lot of times me and Demna, the head designer Balenciaga, will have similar mm. ideas. Like mm. when we did the 700, they did the triple S at the similar time. So, you know, I built a factory in Canoga, California, so we wouldn't have to go to the factories in China. But 30% of the machines were still in storage and it was never built all the way to not have to go to China. So mm. the team went to China. Mm. They're working on this boot. I call it the motorcycle boot right now. And it's, it's stuck in customs. So I still haven't seen it. I said, do we have a picture of it? Or we don't even have a picture of it. Whereas when I have like this gentleman Caesar that works in our office, we'll have an idea and he's just pulling the foam together and molding it right there. I mean, by the end of the day, you get a physical idea of yeah. what once was a Photoshop. So for us to be able to rapid prototype, we have to rapid prototype even the, uh, what we're doing with the way spaces are. You know, it's like we've been stuck in a loop and we gotta break the loop. And that's one of the reasons why I took the denim jacket off, even though I love the, 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 the color, and put on this polar fleece because the idea is more in the future. In the fabrics, we're looking at the fabrics. Are we gonna use traditional cotton? cotton, Or are we using the polar fleece? What impact does the dye have? Mm. And we're studying if we can control the color from the seed. And that's when you go seed to sew because a lot of times you have a separate cotton factory and then they send it out to be cut. Then it gets sent back to the cotton factory then it gets sent to die. And we've been talking about things like screen printing to apply color mm. or mm. dipping it in a different way because we're just looking like nylon is a five story building. So when we're going seed to sew and I'm looking because I like the nylon, we have nylon in here. I'm saying, oh wow, we need to, we gotta have fabrics that don't take five story buildings. I was gonna say, you know, because before we were talking and started filming, I was talking about how- I wanna I get your opinion on why it's important to bring manufacturing back to the States. I mean, I've only been here four or five years, but I mean, I know that it's important to the country that there are jobs here and that there are things happening in the, within the country, within the space of the country. I mean, you know, from mm -hmm. my point of view, I know that there is a huge amount of deliberation over manufacturing and, and, and conditions and wages and all sorts of things offshore. And, you know, I know from, from people, from talking to people in fashion, talking to people in all kinds of industries, that, that there's a desire to control that more, to be more in control of, of um, how people are treated and how things are made. I mean, it's really about control. We have to be in control of our own minds, mm. of our own food, our health, and our families. Well, that's what I was gonna say. When, you know, when, when I arrived, I said, I didn't know whether this was you know, 3,000 years, whether I'm 3,000 years in the past or 3,000 years in the future being on this ranch because it's so isolated and, and, and really you're in the elements apart from this cozy environment. We're in the elements right here. This has mm. just been planted in the middle of the space. Like. Mm. Um, and, and it sounds to me like you want to go back to go forward. Like you want to go back and use some of these te techniques and these ideas oh, in order to- Rome is- Dismantle the, it ultimately. Yeah, like Rome is the, is the true Silicon Valley of humanity. A lot of the ideas and things that we need yeah. have been, are from thousands and thousands of years ago. It's just like, what do we need for our yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of need chart? What is, mm. what are our personal needs as a human being? And what we need the most is each other. Mm. That's why we gather together, just like the antelopes that are running out there. Mm -hmm. We gather together. And what is the best form of each other? Family, to keep our families close. Mm -hmm. But cities have been designed to create more problems that can create more industries. So it's designed that your job is 45 minutes away so that you can spend time in traffic so that the cars have more wear and tear and, and spend more gas and take more gas. But to think of communities where the church is in the center of the community and then, uh, then the school, cafeterias, sustainable gardening, and homes. This is the concept that I have. This is what, we, this is what me and Rick Fox went to the Bahamas uh, as we're working on hurricane-proof homes right now. We're mm. thinking of how to 
or look, I mean, look at the amount of wind that's coming through. You yeah. know, these houses are going to be way yeah, I mean, lower that I put on here. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I yeah. mean, this is not a hurricane, obviously. No, but it, I mean, it whips through. Yeah, and one and, of the, when I was creating the and it's energy it, too, right? I mean, that's what you were saying before. I mean, it, oh, it's it, a, it, may, I mean, God, the elements give you what you need. Is what you're saying? Yeah, God gives us everything that we need. What I love about being Christian is. I've always been an innovator, but it always seemed like all the innovators were working for, I don't know, Anran, I heard the term or something like these ideas that there is no God, all this, and it's just working for the valuation of a company mm -hmm. as opposed to working for the rebirth or it's not a rebirth. I, I might not find the right word, but working for a renewal of the planet and a humility in humanity to understand that we will not destroy the earth. We could destroy the resources. We can destroy ourselves. And we destroy ourselves and sure. then the earth goes on. Sure. So regardless of what's happening at Wall Street and what's happening at the board, uh, at the, you mm -hmm. know, with, with trade and what's happening, a Pangea type mentality, mm -hmm. a UN mm -hmm. coming together. One thing, no matter what side you're on, you're considered to be a bad guy or a good guy. Everybody wants a similar thing, and that's for the world to be better for their children. Mm -hmm. So someone's fighting in a war. Mm -hmm. They want the Facts. world to be better for Facts. their children. Yeah. And what we're not realizing, being all God's creation is, we have so much more in common than we think. I think there's something planted in us, this idea of you know, human nature, even something I was saying, uh, I, uh, I saw on Silicon Valley where this guy was like, I don't want the world to be fixed if, I, if I'm not the one fixing it. <laughs> something. <laughs> But no, you're right. We, we put us, you know, we, we do. We always put ourselves right, right in the in the center of trying to solve things. But I often think that as society, we lack direction and the unity needed to do it as one. Right? We it's, don't always have to be the one that does it. You know, this yeah. interview alone yeah. might do it. I could be in there and, you know, uh, have these ideas of oh, civil engineering and using aqueducts and sustainable gardening and farming. Uh, but there's people out there, they're going to see this and they're like, they're going to come to the table and say, you know, I've done, I've studied this for 10 years. I've mm. studied this for 10 years. I've mm. studied this for 10 years. And it's something where everybody, all the fortune 500 companies, all the founders have to come to the table and say, this is what we want. We were here in 2012. Yeah, it's a difference between founders yeah. and stockholders. What would you say the difference is? <laughs> well, the founder has the ultimate responsibility for the legacy at hand. The stockholder has the ultimate responsibility for the money and the power and the business of the moment in the moment. Yeah, so you gotta look. Look at like Gary from Restoration Hardware. They try to kick him out of his company. Yeah. And it Because his legacy work. didn't match up with the with the with the with the with the power, you know, with the the money and the And they had the to the they had to bring him back. Mm. That's the thing with the founder. Founders are special, bro. Yeah, that's living legacy founders. Yeah, you gotta honor those living founders. Those are the great, 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 great grandfathers of what's being built. So who are the who are the who are the founders right now that you're speaking to? All of them in this <laughs> interview. Give me a call. Four years ago, we did the same thing, but the difference was, and this is the fun. This is how much you've changed over four years. Four years ago, you did the same thing. You turned to the camera and you were like, "I need." I need, I need support to build my vision with Yeezy, and I need people to understand my place in fashion, my place outside of just making music, and I want to be taken seriously, and, I, and, and you said, give me a call. Now, there's a different, there's a different mission, and that required you to um, commit whole, like wholesale to your faith, not just as I am a Christian, but wholesale. You right? know who my favorite founder is? Who? Jack Dorsey. Right. Why? Just incredibly smart, visionary, mm -hmm. He created a bank on his third company. At one company, it fell. His second company is Twitter. He created Square, and now he's got a new arm, I like saying arm, that mm. division, mm. a bank that allows people to buy stock in companies as big as, I'm gonna say his company, I don't know how to say the name, but it's the one that costs 314,000 Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. Jack Dorsey's created an app where 
someone can buy into that stock at a dollar. I'm not saying that that is not possible somewhere on the stock market. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying he created the app mm -hmm. that allows everyone to be invested. To be invested. Uh, I mean, that's just one of the things he did. One of the things that he did is he, he uh, wanted to invest in me early. And he never, he never tried to sun me. A lot of times I would go out and meet with people in Silicon Valley. And it was really like the first episode of Silicon Valley where Kid Rock is like, yo, I'm, I'm Kid Rock. <laughs> and the very next conversation is, yo, that's Kid Rock. He's the brokest person here. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So you were marginalized, you were trivialized. You felt trivialized in that experience as an entertainer trying to play, trying to play tick. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, now that I'm in service to Christ, mm -hmm. my job is to spread the gospel, mm -hmm. to let people know what Jesus has done for me. You know, I've spread it a, a lot of things. I, I, there was a time I was letting you know what high fashion had done for me. I was letting you know what the Hennessy had done for me. I mm. was letting you know all these things, but now I'm letting you know what Jesus has done for me. And in that, I'm no longer, uh, I'm no longer a slave. I'm a son now, a son of God. I'm free through to Christ. I'm thinking of something I want to say out loud, Christian innovator. When you think about the church, because it has to stand on the word so hard, it loves to be extra traditional to the point of blocking innovation. So when we started Sunday service, we were able to be free where people were in doubt mm -hmm. of it and questioned. Some people still in question now saying it's not a church. You can't call it a church because you don't have a pastor. It, all of these things. Is it a church? Well, we have a pastor now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but is it a church? Like, I mean, is that, is that kind of the ultimate compliment for you that Sunday service is a church? Well, let's ask, let's ask North what she thinks. Um, we based our design loosely, not loosely, okay, we Zarod, we, we, we Zarod James Terrell. We, uh, <laughs> we want to one did. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, uh, That's we, a good, it's a we, good one to use. He's a good one to use. Yeah, so we, and I have the utmost respect for, He's or, unreal. for Ortega also. Right, right. The head of Zara, because mm -hmm. I, I would like to Zara Zara. Right. Uh, I want to Zara their infrastructure. Right. And the way that the, their office environment. So, the 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 church that we did, I was you know slightly embarrassed to show James that we had copied his his uh, his circular space. Yep. And it didn't even have an Oculus at the top, so yep. we just copied the way he did the benches right. and then we did some lights. But the lights would move slow, and sometimes it looked like belly. so. It was a big yurt. Yeah. So what is your? <laughs> yeah, it's like a big sort of like rounded TP type environment. Oh yeah, yes. like, yeah. So I showed, you know, North a picture of a James Terrell structure mm -hmm. uh, that I loved. And she said, that looks like church. Mm. That's what church looks like to mm. North. Mm. And North is, you know, she was last night just actually crying about when she couldn't go to church, when it would be out of town and she'd be at school. And she was like, church needs to be here every Sunday. So now we'll only move the church mostly on Friday and only move the choir mostly on Friday and throughout the week, but we'll always have it at home because church does need to be a place that people know they can go to and they don't have to hop on a flight and chase it down and mm -hmm. find that's what is a part of what I think makes it uh, a church. Another thing is when North talks about church, he says, I'm going to bring my friends here and I'm going to dance. Tell me someone that you know that's in our age group that their most positive memory of their childhood, of one of them equally was going to church, where people are like, I want to go to church. Mm. And what do you think that is? Sitting in those pews, the tradition, the four walls. God doesn't exist only in four walls. Mm. God is everything and everywhere. Mm. So Christian innovation, Christian innovators, that's the net that we're casting for the organization that we have now, looking for- Christian innovator. 
Christian entertainer, innovators. rapper, pop, uh, preacher. Well, no longer entertainer. I'm not here for anyone's entertainment. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. So let me ask you this real quick, because I because I want to go here for a minute. Yeah. North's all in. You're raising your family with in this environment now, and they support you and they and and they're believing. Kim as well. Yes. Right. So what about like say you're making this album? What about those? who are talented, who bring something special to the table, who are creative, who inspire you in that regard, but not necessarily worshiping at the altar. How has your relationship with them changed because you're so driven by your faith now? They're still here. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was King David now. I'm not a theologian, I'm a recent convert. Uh, so I just wanted to say that before I start sure. quoting or misquoting scripture. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're on a journey. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that was this journey of this album. You know, there was times where I was asking people to fast during the album. Mm. I was asking people to, this is going to be radical, what I'm about to say. I know this is, we, we can look at it to edit. There's times where I was <laughs> asking people to not have premarital sex while they were working on the album. Mm -hmm. I know that's one with the shade room. Be like, what you mean? You don't have premarital sex. You better turn that Meg the Stallion on right now. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so that but seriously, there's times where I was, you know, there's times where I went to people that were working on other projects and said, could you just work and focus on this? And not just because you needed their attention, but because it wasn't in keeping with the spirit of what you were making. You felt that it was at odds, what they were working on. Yeah, I thought it would be... It would tarnish the experience. Yeah, I thought if we could all focus and fast. I mean, it's known when people pray together, families that pray together, stay yep. together. When people pray together and fast together, mm -hmm. the, the power is, is increased. So, so I had some things where theories, recent converts, they go in and, you know, we're a lot of times the most fire and brimstone, the yeah. most judgmental. Yeah. Because we don't know what to, we don't, everything that we did was of and not for God. So we have to it's really It's a reaction discern. to a degree, isn't it? It's a reaction yeah. of what you've left behind. So yeah. you feel like you must commit 1000% to something in order to leave behind those, the environment you came and from. And tell other people that are around that they need to be committed 1,000%. Right. And right. that's the thing, but God was patient and my family was patient for me when they, when they were praying for me. You know, when they saw me yeah. at the Pornhub Awards, there's family members, they couldn't tell me not to do it. All they could do yeah. was pray yeah. and be patient and it had to happen in God's time. So for me, when I had people around who I would like them to be where I'm at in my journey, this time so all I could do is pray and be patient because right. it's gonna only be in God's time. But you've lived a well-documented life filled with temptation and it's been it's all throughout your records mm -hmm. um, and all throughout your music and it's been quoted. And what's your relationship with temptation now? How do you process that? Are you able, once you find God to the degree you have, to just switch that off? Is that possible? I think when people have been addicted to something. Mm -hmm. Like if you ask somebody that's a drug addict, it's like you say, are you still addicted? Well, yeah, you turn it off actually. Like mm -hmm. with God, I've been able to beat things that had a full control of me. Things that, you know, that, that Playboy that I found when I was five years old, was written all over the moment when I was at the MTV Awards with the Timberlands, the Balmain jeans, before people was rocking Balmain jeans, um, and the Hennessy <laughs> bottle. It's like that was such a, a script out of a rock star's mm. life. My mm. mom had passed mm. a year before, and I said, you know, some people drown themselves in drugs, and I drowned myself in my addiction. Mm. Which was what? Sex. Mm. And that's what drove the ego to fed the ego. I mean, that was part of feeding the ego, money, clothes, cars, accolades, 
the advent of social media, mm -hmm. a Twitter account, mm -hmm. uh, paparazzi photos, mm -hmm. going to Paris Fashion Week, all of that. It's overwhelming. Was, I mean, when yeah. you clear your yeah. mind to the degree you are now, and you sit out here in Wyoming making music, which is spiritually fulfilling to you and hopefully to millions of other people. You know what? Yeah. I was not just addicted to sex. I was also addicted to inspiration. But there's only one, you know. I was aren't, they, aren't they both serving the same purpose to some degree? And I mean this, let me, let me qualify that statement. Okay, addiction, be it sex, drugs, alcohol, is a coping mechanism that uh, is designed to fill a space in you that can't be filled, an insatiable hole, right? Requiring more mm -hmm. and more. Isn't, you said inspiration, maybe I'm meaning more ambition. Isn't that doing the same thing? The, well, they said that, you know, a lot of successful men had a high sex drive. Right. The, who said that? You know, they. <laughs> <laughs> so many quotes attributed to that. I love it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what I meant by addicted to inspiration, mm -hmm. yeah, it could be the sex could be an inspiration, but also just a, a design image, you know, a jacket that I wanted to design, mm. a, a car image, a, a house image. Mm. I was addicted to these kind of images coming across. Like it'll be people who say, oh, architecture is my porn. Mm. And people can be addicted to architecture. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, a big, big addiction is uh, work. Yeah, very much so. Workaholics. Most common. And what about, you know, men that say, men and women that say, hey, you know, I'm working this job so hard to make a better life for my kids. And when they you, look up and they hadn't spent their life yeah, yeah, with their yeah. kids. When do you, exactly. When do you live your life with your actual kids? Where do you find <laughs> that balance? You say, I'm working to make a better life with my kids, but when yeah. are you going to spend your life with your kids? Yeah. And really, it's it like, did you have to work for that fourth house? You know, did you have to work for the... Well, did you? Um, I didn't have to. There's a balance of family and calling that I specifically have. I have to protect and take care of my family and make sure with the power that God has mm. put in my hands mm. that I do everything that I can as the father to provide the best chance at them being the maximum success that they can be. Mm -hmm. That was a very specific- Very thoughtful answer. Yeah, because I didn't say normal life. No, it was very I didn't thoughtful. Say, no. no, it was very deliberate. <laughs> it was very deliberate. So, uh, and I get that, I understand. And I said that. as a father because That's they right. also have a mother. That's right. So and, it's the balance- And it's not about the fourth house. It's about yeah. the environment that you create. Ultimately, they're learning, right? Yeah, and also the environment of, because of my position mm -hmm. in the world, the environment that I inform for other people. You know, we've informed a successful celebrity marriage, a successful interracial marriage mm -hmm. where the husband was the darker color inside of America. We've, we've informed some things that I, I wasn't as into now where, you know, I literally was up there trying to have my daughter outdress Rihanna. <laughs> it sounds crazy when you say it out loud, but if you really think about it, it's like his daughter was walking around with a slip dress. I, the culture was my God. Mm. Because and, and this was documented. I, this was documented yes. in Keeping Up with the Kardashians in, yeah. a, in, a, in a scene. Yeah. Really interesting to watch the dynamic of you and Kim, where she ultimately said you were complicit in this experience, yeah. and now you're asking me to change, and away from the cameras. That's a, that's another example of what you're talking about, is it not? I was. I, I always had a bit of a version of paparazzi, which has been documented mm. also, mm. and I've also had a a. a, a aversion to cameras being on at all times. Mm. There's a balance of when 
we have to be closed on yep. Sunday. But the uh, idea I was gonna say is, the, I thought I was the God of culture, but really culture was my God. And who invented the culture? The culture is cultivated by who? So if you were to think, what is the culture today? What are some of the major things that it includes? And all of the major points of what might make the culture, um, the culture uh, bowing, I mean, taking a knee at a, at a football game, um, uh, wearing you know, expensive clothes, rapping about just rap, period, making money from rap, making money from basketball. Before I get to my point, can we name some other things that you say are part of the culture? Buying mm-hmm. jewelry. Mm-hmm. Uh, What are some of the other things that we see on the culture? Using social media is a very major part of the culture. To be down with or with the culture, you have to use social media, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, What other things? Okay, now let me just get to my point right now. None of these things that you need to be involved in in order to be down with the culture are owned by black people. So who designed the culture? A lot of people would argue that you are instrumental in driving the culture and you own your own companies. That you have inspired that change. Well, it's, it's in, inspired now, but did, did you know that this is where I was going with it when I named all those things? You didn't name yourself though. You didn't name yourself. You didn't name yourself. And yeah, it's a very valid point. Mm. I think that's changing. I think that culture is very squarely going into the hands and the influence now of the, of new, the new founders. I mean, when Chance said don't sign anything, right? his tour was canceled like the next week. Mm. Spiritual warfare. Okay, let's talk about that. You, you, you say it, okay. No, I get it, I get it. And God is changing. God is using me. Mm-hmm. God is using me to show off, I believe. He like, you know, God is, is similar to... He's saying he wanted the loudest voice and the, and the, the one who made the most noise to, to, to make the most impact? Yeah, he wanted to show off. He's like, now, now let me take uh-huh. this, let me take this Nebuchadnezzar type character. Nebuchadnezzar was the king, was it, is it uh, Babylon? Mm-hmm. Ne- Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And he looked at his entire kingdom and said, I did this. And God said, oh, for real, you did this? Sounds kind of similar, right? I'm standing on the tip of the mountain talking about Jesus saying, That's right. I did this. I'm a God. That I'm a God. And I, I could talk to Jesus at the end of my show. I had. <laughs> A guy dressed up as Jesus at the end of my show. He was standing on a huge mountain on yeah. that tour. And that huge mountain, first of all, I didn't make any money off that tour. I'm lugging a, a mountain around. And God said, okay. Nebuchadnezzar was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. He was, and he was still king. So not only was I diagnosed with mental illness, the mental illness is something that was used to take my dome down by 10 feet, to wash me out, to control me. Let me tell you one of the things. Oh, you're saying that they tore it down because they, it, it was based on the fact that they considered what you were doing to be part of, to be crazy. No, that's not what I'm saying, but I, I see that you took it in that way. No, I was just comparing my dome and saying, this guy that can go up to the telethon, this mm. guy that, that we can cancel him off a of radio mm-hmm. and still 20,000 kids come to see him and he is completely not played by the rules of the system and still the most relevant. Mm. We could take him off the time cover. We could do no covers on him on purpose, mm-hmm. on purpose. We could just take away press, no publicist. We could do that. And he still has the number one searched brand on the planet. Meaning like number one, Yeezy. Number two, Off-White. Mm-hmm. Number three, Adidas, and then the other three was like Adidas, Nike, and mm-hmm. Louis Vuitton. I don't know which one was which one was which. But the number one was Yeezy, 
and all the other ones I'm closely associated mm -hmm. with in some way. Mm -hmm. Every one of these guys that are founders now have to look me eye to eye. Every founder on the planet. There will be a time where I will be president of the United States and I will remember, <laughs> I will forgive, but I will remember any founder that didn't have the capacity to understand culturally what we were doing. Interesting tone though, like I will forgive, but I will remember is kind of like, it's sort of like a forgiving, threatening hybrid. <laughs> a little oh, well, bit. Oh, what I'm supposed to forget? No, you said you'll forgive, but what does remember mean if you forgive? Isn't forgiveness, if you forgive yourself for the life you lived up until six, seven months ago, do you still remember all the things I you've done? I will always remember every meeting and interaction I've had with Jack Dorsey, and I will always remember my meetings and interactions with Mark Zuckerberg, mm -hmm. and they've been completely different. Mm -hmm. With social media, people are brainwashed by it. People are addicted to it. It is the modern day cigarettes. Mm -hmm. When cigarettes first came out and Edward Bernays created the, uh, created the Torches of Freedom March to get women to feel empowered yep. by smoking cigarettes. This is from Century of Self, and it shows that Edward Bernays was uh, Freud's cousin. So, you know, I don't know if I should even, even talk anymore. It's like, you guys- what do you mean? I got so much well, more to ask you. I got so uh, much, I just flew to Miami. I got so much more to ask you. It might be five more years before I get to speak I to you. Know. You might be president by the time I speak to you next. Do you know how I'm gonna be on the, on the, on the pecking order when you're president? You, oh, we'll, you write down. No, we'll do an interview. We'll do an interview. I don't do a lot of interviews anyway. I know you don't. It's good to see you again. <laughs> I'll That's... probably do more interviews when I'm president. Um, 2024 is still a thing. It's still that's the that's the time frame. We're working on. You're working on, working on some things right now. So yeah, the what I'm saying is, mm. people are addicted to social media. People invest more into a photo on social media then they invest into real life. One of the reasons why I came to this ranch is to get outside. Anyone that's in a corporate environment, black or white, there's bureaucracy at every level. There's, there, there's rivalries on teams at every level. There's rivalries with coaches, with owners, with stockholders, with founders, and everybody goes home to their families and they want their their sons and their daughters to be as successful as them, if not better. You know, mm -hmm. we're all people. Yeah. So this isn't to, to point fingers and say, this person is doing good and this person is doing bad. Mm. You know, I'm just giving you a flat opinion on what I currently see and what I feel and the pain that I have in my life. I suffer. I suffer and I appreciate the suffering because it's just, we can just feel a little bit of what Jesus felt when we suffer. But social media makes me suffer. Mm. I suffer from that. And by me saying this out loud, I'm sure that there's other married men that suffer in a similar way that are happy to hear me say, oh yeah, I'm suffering. Why well, just married men? Because social media prompts women in particular to put out content that they wouldn't have put out. In right, the so past. you're referring to your sex addiction? Yeah, well, not, yeah, it, it definitely could deal with my addiction. But when I was younger mm. and I wanted to see something like that, I had to, you know, pay someone that was older to go to 7 Eleven mm. and buy it. Mm. Now I got friends that got, have, kids that are in just out of grammar school and high school, mm. that it's completely available. There is no NSFW. I'll load up right now on this computer and I'll load up some things and you'll be like, should that be NSFW mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. Is it just covering just a bit of it? And you know, there's people as a God fearing, married, Christian, innovator, billionaire, founder, no one's gonna take my opinion away from me. I've been giving my opinion my whole career. I didn't kill my career how many times? I'm gonna stop giving my opinion now. People, you know how many times people told me my career was over? Mm -hmm. No one is gonna control my opinion. And 
one of the things where people have been off, let off the hook a bit was this whole, oh, he's crazy. Oh, look at him. He's crazy. That got to mute my opinion for three, four years. But it's God has the power. Jesus is the force that brought the sanity back. Let me tell you how I brought some sanity uh, back by following God. When you are... Um, Yo, boo, can you not be on social media literally as you speak? <laughs> <laughs> See how hot it is? <laughs> oh, yeah. But just something else, like just either like focus the energy here or like be, do, go somewhere else or, from like, or just do it in another room or something. Mm-hmm. But I'm not trying to put you on blast. I'm so just saying that Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> that I, no, but I go into this transcendent state in these Stay interviews there. where like all, oh, I'm actually reading Larry's mind. What's Larry as, thinking? As you're speaking. I'm actually reading Josh's mind. I'm reading um, uh, Mr. Boyd's mind. But what happened is exactly case in point. Something on the internet took a distracted Boo's mind. That's what we're talking about mm. when people pray together mm-hmm. and you're in a room together and you can think things all the way through when that energy builds up. Because artists are like a lake, we reflect what's in front of us. So if you're in front of an audience and the audience is wider, you might say, everybody throw your hands in the air. Yeah. That wouldn't be appropriate if you like came in as one person sitting at the breakfast table and you're like, everybody throw your hands in the air. You're like, look, I'm just one person, bro. It's not, not, nobody else around here. But what I'm saying is you are a reflection of yeah. your room yeah. <laughs> that yeah. you're in when yeah. you are. Yeah, you're you know, and, and absorbing, and absorbing that yeah. energy, trying to translate that energy yeah. and create something great. Yeah. You know, I want to yeah. actually, that, that brings something to mind. When I saw the Pablo tour with the stage mm-hmm. and I watched the way that people moved under it, it felt like a worship. And it felt, the reaction felt like icon, like icon and idol worship. It didn't feel like a, like a normal show. And I wonder now that you're putting your energy into something, channeling it into something bigger than you, how, how hard that is. Looking back on it with some hindsight, just reflect for a minute how hard it is being on a stage when all that energy is coming at you and you didn't have a place to channel it like faith. You, you, exactly, this is the exact point I was making. When you're not serving God, you're serving everyone else. You're serving your ego, you're serving your bank account, you're serving your legacy, you're you know, serving your wife and kids, which yep. is a good thing to serve. You're serving your management or the people that you're managing, you're serving, um, you're serving Hollywood, you're serving your reputation, you're serving the, the responsibility of your race, you're serving, um, you know, there's a, so th- the thing is, I am, you'd say w- what I do with music, that I am a, a top chef, be like a five-star Michelin chef. Correct. Of what I do with music, right? So imagine that level of chef having to serve at 10 different restaurants all at the same time. Right. And drive different places. Those meals. Sounds like a a road to bankruptcy. A road to bankruptcy, a road to TMZ quotes, a road to the world just not understanding. Falling out with your friends? Yeah, falling out with your friends. And people just not understanding. The main thing is, look, we are living in the dark ages. We're living in an age where people die of hunger. We're living in an age where people are being killed in the street by their own race. We're living in an age where one in three African-Americans are being locked up. We're living in an age where there are children being held at the border, some with their real parents, some not with their real parents. We're living in an age where houses are not sustaining through hurricanes. And there's uh, companies that are worth trillions of dollars around the world with geniuses just working on how to make solely their product better. We're living in an age where someone could be fired for what they think if they say it out loud. That's the age. Wake up. This is 2019. This is where we are at right now. This is what Dave Chappelle's whole point was. Stop killing the art. The artists are supposed to express themselves to be able to have that eternal three-year-old at all costs. People say, oh, this is going to kill your brand. But my brand is expressing how I feel. Whether it's in line with what you thought the brand was, even two days ago, a smart man 
has the ability to pivot and say, I think something different now. I don't think this because this was the culture. I don't think North should wear crop tops just because I had her wearing a slip dress when she was two years old. I think and feel differently now, now that I am Christian, now that I'm the founder of a $3 billion organization and married for five years. I have five years of marriage under my belt. Now tell me who you're gonna listen to. What have you learned from five years of marriage? (laughs) What have you learned from that? What I learned from five years of marriage is it is the greatest bond. It is a God bond to be able to have someone that you can call on, someone you can call out, Mm -hmm. someone that could call on you and call you out. Mm -hmm. Equally yoked, someone to complain to, and someone to grow with mm. as we grow and raise our children. That sounds like real commitment. Like I'm mm. not just saying like mm. 10 years of marriage, but that sounds like a lifelong realization. Those are all mm. key attributes to a lifelong bond. Absolutely. Is That's it? it. I mean, I told my wife, I said, Jesus King is coming. There's gonna be a lot of attacks. There's gonna be some silly attacks. Why do you say that? Are you talking about spiritual um, spiritual attacks warfare and again? just spiritual warfare, and then also just societal control attacks? Mm-hmm. I wasn't afraid to speak my mind when I was when I didn't own my masters. I own my masters. You think I ain't gonna talk my mind right now? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This give me some other examples where someone is saying. Um, something that isn't what you're culturally supposed to say. Mm. Give me an example of something, of a, of a position where someone is saying something that you're not culturally supposed to say. Whether, I bet it's only one name you can think of. You don't want to say it, do you, Libra? <laughs> nah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm all right with that. <laughs> that but, say but, the but, name, but, say the name. No, do, yeah, 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 no, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, Donald Trump's on the list. There's no doubt, there's no doubt about it. And I, and I don't, I, I, I'm not a fan, man. Yeah. And that's, that, that's an understatement, right? But yeah. that's okay, we're different. Mm-hmm. We have, and we have different approaches to how we live our life. Yeah. But one thing you said earlier on, which I do totally relate to, which I love, is we're trying to leave the world in a better place for the people that matter to us, our kids. Our kids. And, and, if you're too young to have kids, you're trying to make the world a better place for yourself. And she may be in a situation where it's expected of her now, but I do think Greta Thunberg at one point was on that list, having a 16-year-old kid from Sweden coming out and putting everything on hold and saying what she believed in. And climate change does concern me, and I do think it's a fucking issue. And I think the fact that she came out and did that was huge. And now it's like, oh, that's culturally accepted because she has an army of kids behind her, but at the time she was one kid. She's the only person who stood out in the street and did that mm-hmm. on her own. Do you know how many times I've walked down the street when I've been felt so frustrated about that and thought, what if I just stop what I'm doing and stand out in the middle of a street in Los Angeles with a placard? Would anyone join me, right? I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling that way. And it feels overwhelming. Like what change is it really gonna make? She just showed us up. She did that on her own. Mm-hmm. Started with one person. That was beautiful. And it's beautiful, but it's also Terrifying that we're leaving that world, you know? I see why you're here. I get it. Mm -hmm. I understand why why, why you're checking out. It was too noisy for you there. It was too Mm -hmm. noisy. And you responded by making as much noise as you could. And we're lucky. We got Mm -hmm. amazing art out of it. Amazing art. If this was a trade, Kanye, we did all right Mm -hmm. out of it. You know what? This is so funny. (laughs) Facts. Well, that's good. But also, I owe nobody nothing. My... Forefathers have already fought the fight. So it's not a fight when I put the hat on. It's simply my opinion and it's next subject. Fair enough. (laughs) Fair enough. You know, (laughs) there is part of you that is liberal. I'm the most liberal. He's keeps talking about the liberals, the liberals. Like it's like they're gonna come flying down the mountain here in Wyoming, like on horses and stuff. It's like, you know, come on. Well, they wouldn't come to Wyoming, they'd rather (laughs) <laughs> be with no self service and you know in the valley you just drive into like a all right, all right. eighth meeting a day. All right, I'm a Kanye West fan and, and <laughs> I'm a Kanye I'm a Kanye 
It's a reality. <laughs> I'm a Kanye West fan. <laughs> what you played me of? of oh, well, I was gonna say go, that, go, go. that was shocking for a Kanye West fan. But this shows you that God is hilarious. <laughs> Why? God, you know, there's one gate. There's two gates, or there's three gates, but there's two main gates when you're with houses at the end of the cul-de-sac. Mm. One gate goes, and my house is at the end of the cul-de-sac. Who else house do you think is at the end of the other cul-de-sac of the gate? The name of the gate is their house at the end of the cul-de-sac. The name of the gate is my house at the end of the cul-de-sac. What other rapper do you think? I don't know. Help me out. I'm trying to work out where okay. the cul-de-sac is. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. So God is funny. Yeah. Drake right. lives, oh, four literally. Blocks, lives four blocks down the street from Got it, me. got it, got it. So that shows you that God is like he's got a sense of humor. The Why? Because he's the polar opposite of, what, of where you're at. No, no, it's just because there was a rivalry. For oh, right, 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 right. Now, liberals love art, mm-hmm. right? And now, I am unquestionably, undoubtedly, the greatest human artist of all time. It's just not even a question anymore at this point. It's just a fact, right? So, for the greatest artist in human existence to put a red hat on was like God's uh, practical joke right. on all liberals. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. And, no! and that's why it hurt. Not Kanye! And that's why it hurt so much. It hurt so <laughs> many, it hurt people a lot, you know, because <laughs> you are held up as this person who continues to provide us But those, But those liberals, those liberals never... No, fans, man. Fans. Fans. Yeah, also fans, fans and liberals never stood in front of the prisons to stop there from being one and three locked up or the system that's set up where there's actually not enough legal job opportunities yeah. for us to avoid from being locked up. Now you got the Clintons, that's privately owned prisons. You get what I'm saying? It's like everyone, everyone, no one is God. Everyone bases their opinions on a group of propaganda-esque images fed to us from the very first cartoon or the very first cereal box that we saw in a grocery store. And our environment, friends, schools, religion, uh, country, Mm -hmm. music that we listen to, all informs our opinion and what side we're on. We've been herded into an idea of blue or red, right, left, but there's actually a time when we were closer to heaven, when we were six months before we could learn, before we learned how to speak, before things got so compli- uh, so so complicated, where we actually had more in common. All of these things that separate us, it's like when you don't spend time talking to so, somebody for a long time, you start to build up more and more and more and more and more reasons yeah, why you an, shouldn't be yeah, talking to them. Yeah, there's anxiety and, it, and, and distance creates that anxiety. The sure. distance has created an anxiety. We, we are the same human beings. We are gods. And that man versus machine is man is the machine. So we if are God's imperfect creation because we perish. Go ahead. So if you're in a situation now where you're able to, 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 to you want to mend that, you want to bring those things together, starting with the relationships in your life, are you able to do that? With the, with the friendships that have, that, have, that have deviated, you talk about the rivalry with Drake, you talk about this public fallout with people who you've shared a really valuable part of your life with, Jay-Z, people like that. Are you able to mend that? Is this putting you on a path of recovery in personal relationships as much as it is in your own relationship with yourself? Absolutely. You cannot be in service to God. Mm and be mad at your brother. Have you started that process? Next door. Mm. Yeah, I go to Drake's house, just I walk over there with no security and just uh, leave my phone number. Here's my cell. But I, you know, I'm not trying to ring the doorbell and say, oh, you gotta, you gotta come out mm. side right now. He might be busy. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he got a studio in there, you know, he probably, you know, you're just going to think at, that Drake is recording at all times and stuff. Like, man, he probably recording. No, nah, no, nah, man, we got to leave. He probably recording. <laughs> so. <laughs> but you would like to see that. You'd like to see that. Yo, 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 yeah. man, can I talk? He in the booth. <laughs> Always in the booth. <laughs> you know how rappers about? I'll stay in the booth. <laughs> I don't leave the booth. <laughs> Speaking of the booth. I put my bedroom in the booth. Put your... <laughs> 
<laughs> sleep in the booth. I sleep in the booth. I sleep in the booth. <laughs> I wake up, I, I have bars for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'll go leave my cell and things like that. You know, it's like, um, mm-hmm. you know, with, with Jay, you know, I, I love all of these people, but you got to know there's a, there's a lineage of Jay to Yay to Drake. It's, you know, this person is your idol. Then you get to know him. Then you be friends. Then you turn to frenemies. Then you turn to enemies. And then you got to bring back the positive energy. Mm. But that is the lineage of like rap kings, mm. you know, mm. and inspirers. Because Jay was my biggest, you know, inspiration. By the time I got to New York, and we had the throwbacks. I'm gonna tell you, I'm really uh, uh, Big Boy had the throwbacks first. In the what was it? It's called Sky High. Mm-hmm. I think he had the Astros, mm-hmm. and then he had another one. I think he might have had in the Watch for the Hook video. He might have had it, but Mitchell S had a little stand at Lennox. and I would be going down there doing beats for Jermaine Dupri, and I pulled up to the stand and grabbed a throwback. We started getting a lot of throwbacks, and I pull up to, you know, baseline, and they were like, you know, I pull up with my throwback, and like Jay is like, man, that's nice, you know, like that. Then I pull up the next, I got another throwback. Then four days, they say, "What you stay in Atlanta?" <laughs> <laughs> and then Don C was using this thing that we that we hadn't heard of called the internet <laughs> selling jerseys you know online mm. so he been had a store like RSVP it's crazy yeah. that was like think about think about that for a second think yeah. about like yeah. that probably feels like a drop in the ocean right yeah how innocent that time was back yeah. then yeah who you were back then versus who you are now mm-hmm. and the journey you've been on to get to this place yeah. that's a life what happens to all the work, what happens to all the music, what happens to the songs that we still love, what happens mm-hmm. to those? Y'all can listen to them. Sure. But what happens to those from your perspective? <laughs> Wait, they, and thank you for that. And we will. But what happens to those? I, I, I'm, I'm going back. Y'all about to get the George Lucas versions right, of all right, those, right, but he added right. all them robots. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like, you're yeah. such a lovely God. I love you. <laughs> like, it's like when George Lucas took the old songs. Just, right. I mean, the old clips. There's a church in the wild. <laughs> yeah. right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Literally. Literally. Reversion. Literally, yes. You're going to have to get the new version. You got to get those old versions. We are removing Jesus' wife from <laughs> the, the um, I, that's a, huh. I, I went to the Vatican and there was a Raphael painting and the, the person said, this blacked out part is where Raphael painted Jesus' wife. Mm. And the Pope was so mad that he sent people to kill him and Raphael died of a cold before they could kill him. Mm. And that was when I was saying about when they wanted to tear the domes down, I was like, I was gonna tear it down before y'all. Mm. Like, but there's no win in that. But I was going to tear them down because I was just experimenting anyway. They think they, you know what I'm saying, they did something. They think, oh man, we made you tear down. I was experimenting with them domes anyway. Yeah. We were just trying to get, we were just getting proportions. We were seeing what it felt like. We took the domes up and we would eat there. And we started having, you know, things like, three, you want some 3,000 years? Larry, you'd say that was 3,000 years ago. We stepped into... Mm. Yeah, we were eaten by the fire. Mm-hmm. Oh. How proprietary can you be in an environment where you serve the Lord? And I want to bring up a specific example, this, this idea of... That is such a good question. This idea of mm. trademarking Sunday service, which ultimately is a term, you have created an environment which is communal and belongs to everyone. It isn't just a Kanye West show, but there's the idea of like, Ownership over that term. How does proprietary behavior exist in a, in, a, in a time of ultimate servitude? It isn't. Everything is for God. And we can receive donations. Mm. That's the only way that it can work. So, the, so the money you make from the merch is, is, is in donation to the cause? I mean, I would say so. I've you know, spent, if... If tithing is twenty, if tithing is ten percent, Sunday service is definitely called me twenty percent. 
at this time. But let me sure. let me just uh, sure. <laughs> let me uh, let me sh- make sure. But it's an iteration where we haven't completely solved it. So we're praying on it. We're, we're praying for the answer mm. in God's time for me to be able to work only for the church. That, you wanna say my 20 year vision? That's my 20 year vision. Everything that I do is for the church. Even designing a shoe for the church. Even all the shoe names, our shoe names be like John 316 instead of 350s. Now everything is for, now Mm -hmm. everything is for the church. That's a vision that I that I have to be able to be an innovator and a Christian innovator. Christian innovator. Think about this. You know, it's a lot of a lot of organizations have capitalized on my creativity and innovation. So uh, if everything is for the church, yeah. and that includes the the relationship with your fans, let me ask you this. What is the relationship between a Kanye West fan and somebody who ultimately is following the same path as you. And is there a desire? Is there a desire ultimately to convert? To convert to convert people through this process? It's not a desire, it's my only mission and calling is mm. to spread the gospel. When I make a song, it's to spread the gospel. When we make a device, this a uh, portable stem player that we designed with Teenage Engineering uh, for this album mm-hmm. and albums moving forward is to spread the gospel. There's the ranch, any ranch that we use, the ideas behind it to spread the gospel, to show everything that I do and to be more respectful to my body as a temple. Yep. You know, even like, you know, I had, I was thinking, oh, you know, just using my mind and running this company was good enough. No, I need to, mm. you know, watch my diet and How watch you what I'm that? eating. What changes have you made? Uh, I didn't order that frozen margarita today at uh, at lunch. Do you drink at all? <laughs> you know what? I had stopped drinking completely uh, when, when I first converted. Mm-hmm. And now I'll have a drink. It's just, mm. uh, what, I, what I've been told, is to not have drunkenness. Because <laughs> I was thinking, man, is the, just the taste of alcohol a sin to taste the alcohol on your lips? Because that's what just, I'm trying to work yeah. out. Like, like when you've come from, okay, so check it out. Mm. So if, if, this, if, if, if becoming a born again Christian is an ultimate reflection upon life before as being sin, right? Not everything in life was sin. But when you first become born again, that's what you have to address. You have to take a look at the whole picture and, and almost untangle it from that, work backwards from that, right? Like what is a sin and what is not? That's, a, that's an intense experience, surely. Well, yes, and then you figure out that you still sin. I started giving myself two curses a day. Oh, like, like it was wow. a video game, like wow. uh, this is, now people say, you know, God doesn't have a scorecard. I gave myself a Christian scorecard. Yeah. And I'm like, today, yeah. I was like, a, I hit an 80. Yeah, I was yeah. a 90, I hit a 90. And at certain times I get on the phone with somebody, I'm like, man, they about to lower my Christian scorecard. <laughs> like an Uber rating. <laughs> cause, you're trying to, Cause you're trying to be the best Christian you can be from day one. I've, you always, always want to be, but I mean, like, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm trying to things. work this terminology out myself, but yeah. you've always been a Christian, but you're, you've made a com- complete commitment, so it's all or nothing from day one, and then you have to work in what is appropriate from that point forward. But it's it's never all or nothing because you, you're a human being. You're right, not, right, right, right. That's I guess what I'm getting at. Are, are you allowing? Are you being kind to yourself through this process? Are you allowing fallibility? in this process. Yeah, but then I'll be repenting because I'll, you know, go and like, look at something I'm not supposed to be looking at on, on the internet. Right, and how do you right. process that now? Guilt? And shame? then, this is how it is, I'm not saying, oh no, no, no shame. Now that's something that Christ has uh, removed is the shame. What happened is, 
it's it doesn't work like karma. God is so merciful that it's not directly connected. So this is a thought in my mind that's incorrect and quite arrogant to think that God would immediately punish me mm-hmm. for me knowingly falling short. That's of, the ego talking again. Yes, yeah, the ego talking. But I give you, I just give you an example mm-hmm. of it. You know, say if I slip up and look at something pornographic online, and then the next day I get into a big argument with my wife, mm-hmm. or uh, or some of the designs don't come back right at the office, or a song, mm-hmm. we lose a file or something, someone will show up to the studio. You know, this is incorrect, but this ego and arrogance has me thinking, oh, it's because I did that thing. Right. And then I it's instantly- correlation. Yeah, I try to correlate it, but that's not God. God doesn't work like that, and we, we don't know how God works. But I'll go and be repenting, I'm sorry for loading up that. <laughs> Interracial, uh, <laughs> I thought it was the most like me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> You've got fences here, but how far do you walk? How far do you let yourself go into this? <sighs> I'll just do like a 30, 40 minute walk. God, you could go for days, bro. Don't yeah. you ever get tempted to do that? Don't you ever get tempted to just like, do you want to go back, like, just see what it would be like to just walk walk off into the distance. You own it all. Yes. <laughs> it's just four hours and I used to get other stuff on my schedule. But isn't that what you're like, ultimately like looking for? Like most liberals. <laughs> <laughs> you put me in this, in, this, in this category now. I'm all right with it. No, but I'm a liberal also. Exactly. So that means like exactly. we're running around we're trying running to around. do what we can to help the world. And but we've it, got isn't this. this ultimately a process if you're trying to slow things down and find space to do that? To give yourself space to think? Have you been able to do that yet? Switch off like that? Yeah. Well, you know, the most space that I had to think is when I went to the hospital. Yeah. In 2016. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure if the wind picked it up, but I asked you, I said to you, do you ever just take the time to walk your land and just think? And surely to, to some degree you bought this place and you're, you've redesigned your approach to living in, in order to find space. Mm-hmm. to think and you excuse me and you said um one of the only places that, the place where you, really, you felt you really got to think was in hospital in 2016 and i wonder that's where i had the most space mm, to think what came from that experience on you know in terms of the, the processing one of the things that was written we have the booklets that i would write one of the things that i wrote down was build a church in calabasas mm. so uh we were at Sunday service, and we were doing a set adrift on memory, bliss of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I would die without you. Mm-hmm. Die without you. Mm-hmm. And um, my wife showed me where I wrote sample PM Dawn, die without you. So one of the things that happened when I went to the hospital, um, as I started reading the Bible and I started writing out, copying and writing out Bible verses. And a person came to my house that wasn't a Christian and told me, come over. And then 30 minutes later, I was in handcuffs headed to the hospital. Now, this person very well may have saved my life because when you're in an episode, you can jump off the side of a balcony. Yeah. You can stab your eye out. The presence do, of mind is not. Yeah. You could do a dead. lot of things when you're ramped up like that. But one of the things that people do now is They try to discriminate against my mind and my thoughts because of that moment. It's like if someone, you know, went to jail and now they're working at an office Mm. and they have an argument with somebody, who are they gonna blame for the argument? The guy that went to jail. Mm -hmm. So I still have radical thoughts visions, future ideas. And sometimes when I say them out loud, people could just denounce it and say, oh, you're crazy. No, I don't buy that. And I think about- I don't buy that because as someone who who has suffered with mental health issues throughout my life, Mm -hmm. and you know, had to really develop tools in order to do them to protect my family, because I can definitely find myself in a very, very dark place. Um, I'm grateful for those experiences and those thoughts. Oh, absolutely. 
to, to be able to have gone that far to go to places that people say only ayahuasca and different things can take you, but to naturally be able to think that far and connect. And the way, you know, I feel another thing related to me wearing the hat that liberals love to do is say, oh, this relates to mental health. His story is mental health. Is he like, my wife would go places and people would be like, is Ye okay? Is he doing, is he okay? Mm. Like Kobe Bryant has won five championships and he's got a lot of injuries. His, his story isn't pulling an Achilles and every story after that, how he pulled an Achilles. But the same press that doesn't want to do the press and doesn't want to say, hey, Yeezy is the most Google brand. And mm. this guy is a billionaire. This guy is a black Trump supporter. This guy is, they want to make the conversation always be about mental health. And I do love the fact that I can show the world that I'm sitting here and have been diagnosed, put on medication, medication to make me fat on mm -hmm. purpose. Because after I didn't want to take the meds, they were like, okay, we got this version that don't make you fat. They're trying to kill the superhero. <laughs> so I'm here to show that someone that's diagnosed can still drive and be the founder of a multi-billion dollar organization, can still be in service to Christ can still be a good husband and a good dad. My life does not end with this diagnosis. No, and I will not no. be stigmatized. I'm gonna say one thing. And discriminated. No, I'm, so, I'm gonna say one thing from, from my perspective. Yeah. I've said this in public, to, yeah. and I've said this in private to many of my friends. Yeah. You know, when I heard the Kids See Ghost project in particular, yeah. that project was one of the first things that I'd heard that not only removed the stigma of having mental health issues, but like you said, put a cape on it. Mm -hmm. gave it a power. I think where, the men, where people get confused and, and, and align it with mental instability is, is, if I may say, is the distribution of the information. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean like when I tweet 100 tweets? Or when you go off and you do it all in two weeks and everyone sees this flurry of activity and it's like every day there's three things coming at you that you're distributing information-wise then people, I think their natural instincts, if I can speak for people, are to go, is he okay? There seems to be a lot of disruption and instability going on around him in this very short window of time. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, but I've never been just okay. I've always been amazing. So they want me to operate in a just okay format. Mm. And that's not the format that I'm in. And, and I mean, the biggest, it's always the defense. You just said, it's okay but it's not okay. It's amazing. HSP, highly sensitive people, meaning people who can't stand the BS. I can't sit with something on my spirit for more than a day. Mm. I can't go to sleep on it. I, got, I have to express it. The, the, when, when I was, you know, me and Drake had the disagreement and he refused to talk to me for six months, that was so painful because Expressing yourself is a form of therapy for people with mental health. So you saw, I expressed myself. I've been waiting to express myself for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then the expression fully came out. People that are locked up a lot of times ran out of words. The expression went to, I'm just about to go shoot somebody or I'm, I'm going crazy because I don't have a way to feed my family mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. My gang said that I'm disrespected and if I don't go and kill this person, then they gonna look at me like I'm that strong. So it's a lot of things where people are driven to not have a conversation all the way through. Another thing I, I was thinking about when I used the bathroom mm. earlier, earlier the day, when I was taking, early just now, or when I was taking a piss, cause it pissed me off, is when the media says Kanye defends his support of Trump, I didn't know I was in a courtroom. I ain't got to defend nothing. It's not a defense. You know, 
If every time someone asks you a question, you try to say the right answer, your entire life is a test. And when did you have the most anxiety in grammar school and high school? No question. On test day. No question. So your entire life become this test. I ain't trying to say the right answer. I am just doing what I feel. My mama said trying is failing. There is no ifs, woulds, coulds, shoulds. It just is, and we just are. And it is so. It's simple. That's like, and this mentality should not be defeated. Yay, cannot die, yea, cannot be buried. There is nothing. There, as a matter of fact, no enemy. There is, I'm my only, only, the enemy is a concept that's out. It's like a game. Think about it, you play a video game, there's an antagonist, but it wouldn't be a game unless there was an opposition. I ain't mm. trying to play ping pong by myself. Mm. So they set up new goals. I mean, there's one time where it was like, okay, Drake is your rival. Now, I think, I think more about Bernard Arnault than I think about Drake because he might have thought he got culture by taking Virgil, but it's like, no, now you're having to pilfer from my territory. You came in and took one person that is African-American, is African, and that could be the face to draw Louis Vuitton on the side of backs mm -hmm. and get people that look at Instagram and want to buy expensive items that are of the culture, so to say, to overspend on things. Oh no, actually you stepped into my territory. How did that make you feel initially <laughs> when that happened? At the beginning, not when you hugged each other at the, uh, you know, at, at the fashion show, which was one of the best things ever mm -hmm. that year, that moment. Mm -hmm. but at the moment when he left and that happened, how did you feel? Um, you know, I felt bad. I felt like it was supposed to be me. I was the Louis Vuitton Don. People still call me the Louis Vuitton Don when I'm walking down the street. But I took a branding from something that someone else had made up and is in control of. Mm. So it was completely up to Bernard, who he wanted to, to don as the Louis Vuitton Don, mm. because he bought the bag brand. He went and hired Marc Jacobs. He created the industry. He innovated the industry of luxury brought people out to fashion shows in Paris. I mean, Bernard Arnault is one of my heroes. He's mm. probably my top. My dad is my top living hero. And then like way, way under that is <laughs> Bernard Arnault because he's got the taste. He's got the sensibility. He's got the eye, man. This man created the idea of even wanting Louis Vuitton. Mm. It was just an old bag brand mm. and he bought it. And then he had the wherewithal to get this kid out of New York, Mark Jacobs, to go in and ramp it and bring it to the streets with Sprouse, me and Pharrell, and let him go wow. You know, let Kim Jones do the Supreme and now hire Virgil. Like, I really admire what Bernard has done. He also offered me a deal five years ago when we had our first Yeezy show, shook my hand, said we never go back on a sh handshake, then dropped the deal three months later. Mm. And it had effect on me going to the hospital. Mm. Because my first Adidas collection that has like these pants from season one mm. had lineups. The second collection never came out because I had to indemnify the apparel with Adidas. So, no Adidas, no Louis Vuitton. Mm, mm. And for me, with, I'm rapping, Drake stay right down the street. I'm designing, I don't have production. I haven't done it before. No one wants to help me out. I'm tweeting by season three. Season four, the show was 45 minutes late and they LeBroned me. Mm. Meaning like they did mm. what they did to LeBron when he said he's going to the heat. Mm. My wife got robbed in Paris and 
out, out of control. Yeah, next thing you know, I'm in the hospital and I have to wear that for the rest of my life, which I take a ba as a badge of honor because it say, don't treat me like a celebrity. Always know. You're a human being first. Yes, one, one, 100%. Um, and then out of anybody that they could have chose, no one they did that, they got one of the best men for my wedding. Mm. And what I love about when I hugged Virgil is he, he showed me that actually we're all playing on the same court. And he went and ran that field goal. He ran that touchdown in for us all because there was a time where we all were crazy. There's a time when it was fish sticks in South Park. Now everybody want to pull up at a fashion show, but he really stamped it by being that designer. He validated it. He validated it. And when I said earlier, I always thought it was supposed to be me. Mm. It always was and is supposed to be me, but I'm not supposed to be working for Bernard. Mm. Mm. I'm supposed to be bringing manufacturing, you know, back to America. They did me a favor, mm. but I tell you what, now Bernard knows my new Drake. <laughs> I tell you that. I ain't even thinking. I mean, I want all blessings. Drake, I I'm an ordained minister. If you want me to, like, when he finally get married, I'll show up like, Aubrey, when I had ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be good at that. You'd be good at that. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, you should be good at everything. My bad. I, you, you didn't get the memo? I'm just, no, I'm not good at holding my breath or holding my tongue. I'm real bad at it. Real bad. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, but it was supposed to be me in that way. But God had a bigger plan. This is, that thing is so much the Instagram, the Jesus Instagram where the little kid is holding on to a little teddy bear. There's an Instagram where a little kid is holding on to a little teddy bear and Jesus has this huge teddy bear behind his back. But you don't want to let go of that little teddy bear that you've known your whole life. Mm. That's what I was talking about, the tradition. Mm. You don't want to let go of what you think it's supposed to be. And there's God's got a bigger plan for you. That's why I didn't want to even be, you know, presumptuous and arrogant, like borderline blasphemous to try to tell you where this would be in 20 years. Mm. You know, I, I'm open. Hey, God, use me, please. Please, Jesus Christ, use me to the maximum. If it is in your will, he's given me all these skills. Like it's times I sat in my house and I'm looking at how beautiful my house is and me and Axel Vavort did it. And I'm looking at the designs, I'm looking at the music, I'm looking at what we do with show design, like the floating stage and the mountain. Mm. And I'm thinking, why God, why couldn't I work for Bernard Arnault? And God is like, because I need you to work for me. This is what Sway was talking about. And now, I used to say how Sway, now I could say now Sway. Now Sway, now it's time. <laughs> That's what this is all about. <laughs> yes. And Sway gonna be like, well, you could have gave me the interview. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. But Sway, I love you. Old respect, dude. I'm a, I'm a fan of my peers, but it's been five years waiting to get to talk to you again. And mm -hmm. I think about it, and I think about you being $42 million in debt when we spoke the first, well, it wasn't the first time. Do you remember the first time we ever spoke? It was way before that. I asked you what, what no, it was memorable for you, but not for me. Well, I remember it. <laughs> and I remember <laughs> So, so I'll hold on to that memory. That's all right with you. Okay. This, is how, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is how far our conversations come. The most memorable question I asked you in the first interview we ever did was, which beat do you wish you'd made? Do you know what your answer was? Benjamin's. <laughs> Benjamin's. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't because of the question. It was because I just remember, I, you know, it wasn't because you asked it. It was because, <laughs> oh, it's because I asked it. <laughs> <laughs> then we found ourselves 42, you found yourself $42 million in debt. Mm. You were screaming at people to, to notice you and to give you and to, and to back you, show some faith. Yeah, I'm saying Mark Zuckerberg looking for aliens. Hey, go one right here. Yeah. Yeah. And now you own this and you're on the cover of Forbes. They neglected to mention it, but you are a billionaire. 
Well, they made up the term sent to millionaire. They made up a special term. It was a special term that makes sure that the last line says, and maybe one day he will he will be a billionaire like his little sister Kylie. You know that line was right. why I did the interview in the first place. Right. Because it was such a yeah yeah it's sticking it in a stab, yeah. you know. So and they manage. They put that last there, and it was like take that red hat, mm. Mm. <laughs> liberal high five. <laughs> <laughs> That's what liberals be doing. They be, they be at because liberals like eighty percent of the press. Think about it. You know, you got Tom Brady. You know, he playing sports, and you got the liberals writing the newspaper. You know, there's a fight going on. There is a big fight going on between right now. There is there's not a lot of communication between side left and side right. Mm-hmm. I'm saying there's a fight going on, and that's why you found yourself in the middle of that. Is because. There's a lot of people on the, on the left side who you call liberals, who you inspire and you give, you've given us greatness. And I know that that's not why you do it. And I'm, I know it's- I, I am a liberal. I'm a 200 percenter. Mm. Every situation, I understand. My wife does something that makes me mad. I'm just like, but I understand your perspective of why you did it. Right. But it still makes me mad. Right. I 100 percent feel and understand why people have their position that are on the left. Mm-hmm. I 100% understand the people on the right. And the issue is communication, that people are not communicating. And for people to mute themselves is what I thought was the, the harshest thing to say. If you're black, don't talk to this person. No, I'm gonna talk to everybody as long as I got air in my lungs. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm gonna go pull up, say, hey, Putin, how you doing? Hey, Kim Jong-un, how you mm-hmm. doing? How? Hey, anybody, I will talk, I will have a conversation with anyone with respect and love. I have love and respect for everyone. I don't have admiration for everyone, <laughs> but I have love and respect. Mm. Yeah. Jesus is King. Do you want to tell people what's coming in December? Oh, yes. Sunday service album, Jesus is Born Mm -hmm. on Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's coming. You will continue to build from here Mm -hmm. outward. And Mm -hmm. I know you only think six months in advance. Well, that's what you said before. Well, I don't buy that part, actually. I know that may be an aim of yours, but I do think that you probably have a broader idea about what this becomes. And where would you like to see this? when you finally find a place where you're, at, when you're at peace? I just will keep getting used by God. I don't love suffering. No one loves pain, but I'm still through the good times and through the suffering, I praise God because I experience the blessings and I also experience the lessons. Mm. I'm just so blessed for everything I've been through to still be standing here and 15 years in, be making an album where the work, the paintings still are inspiring to me. Where I want to hear them, I want to listen to this. I want to have, you know, music is my job. That's why I'm putting out the album, serving God and everything I, I can do is my job. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm on the planet, is to be in service, in fear, love, and service to God. Bari was, you know, throughout the summer, he'd come by and play me a new album, playing the Solange album, and, you know, just playing new artists. And we'd be working on clothes, and he's like, okay, clothes is good, and okay, cool, this is multi-billion dollar company, that's cool, but yay, music is your job. It's your job. This is what, like, I believe if I stop doing music, not because it promotes the brand, I believe because God has given me a gift that I prayed for and so many people love that if I stop doing it, he might start to take other things away. Because who am I to say, oh, I got these shoes now, or oh, we're building these hotels now, or oh, you you know, 
uh, I got a family now, so I'm not gonna do music. I'm not gonna give people these new ideas that I have. I had to really, and you know, it's fun, it's a good job. It's a fun thing to do and I quite enjoy. Is it as fun doing it now as it was doing it in Hawaii or doing it in Paris or doing it at the Mercer or doing it with Jay or doing it for Jay? Mm, that's a good question. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I quite enjoy the sound of my own voice. And apparently by the streams, billions of other people do also. But that's not what the, I asked. Is it as fun? No, I just wanted to do that sound by the <laughs> I had in my head or something. The, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, go ahead now. Is it as fun? <laughs> or is it just different? The job? You know, when you were wearing the backpacks, when you're sitting there making it, the, all the footage of you in the studio, just making, just literally vomiting up these beats, like just in spontaneously creating things like no one else can on this keyboard and making these bangers and coming up with this stuff. Is it, is it as fun? I mean, we sitting here in front of 10 Sherps. Do they look fun to you? We could drive on a lake. We got a lake. Do they look fun Is to making you? music <laughs> as fun? Is your job as fun? What I'm saying, this is a part of my job. This is what I do in the midst of my job. Like, when I hand the, uh, hand the new device, we, we need to still working on the name, but the, the portable stem player mm. to my daughter, and she's playing it, and then she turns down the vocal and then turns up the vocal, and her eyes light up. This like is a this feeling. Is the, her eyes light up the way Jay's eyes used to light up when I would come and play him a beat. And that meant everything to you at the time. That was, that was everything you were striving for at that moment in time. That yeah. validation, now the validation comes from your family. Well, I don't know if it's about a validation as more, at, it's not about validation, it's about the light. Seeing mm. Jay's face light up when I would play him those beats and now seeing North's face light up when she's playing with the device that we just created. What is this device you keep talking about? We'll, we'll go, go back to the studio, we'll play it. All right, cool. But ticks in general are dark. Music has more of ability to be light. Mm -hmm. Similar to Tesla, I'm about lighting the world up, about being a light, being a beacon, and having other people experience joy through what we create, whether they're holding the product that we create or experience the Sunday service or when they used to come to the tours and see the imagination, someone up there with a, a, a mask on. It's, it's not about entertainment as more as, it's not about entertainment, it's about imagination. Witness the imagination and feel good, feel, know that things are possible. Know that things that you feel are possible. That's what, that's my job. That's what I'm here to do. To do things you're like, oh, I didn't know. That's why we gotta go and take the Sherp out on the lake so you can see that this thing literally drives on the lake <laughs> and that it is possible for these to do that. The, and I think that, that, I think this is a good thing, this anchor about you know, comparing these moments of, or also the way people hear, the reason why I love doing listening sessions is to be close to all these people hearing the way they felt when mm -hmm. they first heard so it. To see the light. Yeah, we see the light. You know, whereas when an album is like released mass wide, you can kind of hear reviews coming back or you mm -hmm. hear people driving down the street, Just that feels good. It, yeah. yeah, it's there's a communal element to music that streaming helps and it's actually, it takes away from it a little bit. It's like uh, uh, video killed the radio star, streaming mm -hmm. killed the video star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> HSP, hypersensitive people. Yeah. I've never heard that term before. Do you think that that is the thing that you're most misunderstood about in the way that you're being perceived and treated? Is that, is that people ignored or perhaps didn't understand your sensitivity levels? Yeah, I also, but I also feel it's a camouflage. If the system that supported Kanye West had any idea that I would make it to that telethon or make it to that Taylor Swift stage or make it to be the founder of this $3 billion company, they would have injected it with drugs way earlier. They would have tried to do anything to stop it earlier, but it's too late. So it's been a camouflage. And even right now, as I speak, there's a, a wash of arrogance 
that because I've been diagnosed with mental health, because I am black, because I've been positioned in this entertainment field, because I've had a red hat, all these different things, it, it makes, I'm, I, you know, when I talk, it's a dog whistle because the people who need to hear it, hear it. And the people who don't need to hear it, that should be afraid of it, are too much bigots. They're too much of bigots to, and I'm gonna say too much bigots because the use of incorrect English is also a comma, uh, it's also a camouflage. <laughs> yeah. They're too much bigots to believe that it can happen. Bernard Arnault doesn't believe that the kid that had a backpack on would be standing across the stadium from Jay-Z, the greatest rapper mm. ever. Mm. Think about that. Mm. A little kid in Baseline Studio with a backpack on mm. someday to be across the, across the stadium from one of his heroes. Bernard Arnault is one of my heroes. Your dad is your number one hero. Yeah, and then Bernard's way, way, uh, way I don't think I've under ever, that. I don't think I've ever heard you talk about your dad before. <laughs> Certainly, no, we've never spoken about your dad before. Oh man, that's, my dad is, he has a water purification center. He don't know no raps. He stayed in homeless shelters less than 10 years ago just to help people. He's a Christian marriage counselor, master's degree. Met, you know, met my mom in college. It's like, and now at age 40, at age 42, so many artists at age 40, like Tesla stopped having sex at age 40. Da Vinci uh, said, I'm not gonna paint rich women mm. anymore. I'm gonna build bridges mm. at, at this age. This is the age mm -hmm. when you start to see. You guys haven't even seen, when they do books on what we, we're gonna make, you're gonna look at the sound and say, oh, it's a yay sound. It's all these different things. We haven't really experience what the paintings are yet. You talk about being in practice, like hey, Al Iverson said, who need practice? We don't have choir practice, we have choir growth. Mm. We have grown the amount of chords that I've listened to mm. in the past year alone, like in off time. Even when I was doing five albums in a row, I was like, oh, this is just like LeBron, just back on the treadmill, yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yo, I'm gonna just do these five yeah, albums. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. about to, you know, just that, that five albums was a part of my rehabilitation from coming from the hospital. Think about like when I was at Nike, when I was at Nike, there wasn't no Virgil, there wasn't no Drake, there wasn't no Travis. There was, it was just like, yay, graduation. And then when I left, you know how the brand Anti-Social Social mm -hmm, Club? Mm -hmm. They made the Anti-Kanye Kanye Club at <laughs> Nike. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> other versions <laughs> to be Anti-Kanye. <laughs> Someone's gonna watch this and they're gonna stop that <laughs> shit. There's gonna be an, an, an official anti Kanye Kanye club, trust me. Okay, um, and they made the Pro Jesus Jesus Club. Then they're gonna make a Pro Jesus Jesus Club? They're gonna make a Pro Jesus Jesus Club. Michael. Right, cool. <laughs> to the hotels <laughs> and everything you're gonna build, man. Um, well, and building it for us, other people's families, not just, uh, no. Building it for us, for, for everyone, just innovating, thinking, why does that plug have to go into that wall like that? Why, do, why is this room this far away? Why is this couch designed like this? Why is this we... your life's work now? From this point forward, yeah. it is your life's work. Creatively, it's what I'm interested in expressing, but it will only be expressed if it's in God's will. Because if God wants me to build these factories, they shall be built. And if God says, that's not what I want you to do, yeah, yeah, I want you to go, I want you to sit in jail. I want you to go to sit in Africa uh, uh, for this amount of time for this reason. I want you, I don't know what God has planned that for me. Surrendering of control in your whole life has yes. been about control. Exactly, think about that. It could go from being this to whatever God has planned mm that I am ready to be in service to God and whatever he has planned for me. Thanks right. for inviting us here. This, yeah, is, this, place, this place is super special, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, well, let's, let's walk back. I'll show you the machine, cool. play you some music. And then I'll go ahead and like finish the album up. Yeah. That part too. Yes.
Thank you, man. This has been really special. Yes, yes. Uh, that's fire. This is like, yeah, this, this is crazy. This is one for the ages. This is crazy. So I guess, you know, in anticipation of the album coming, you know, we should focus a little bit on, on some, of the, some of the folks who have contributed to it because, you know, there are other people who are involved. We just spoke about a couple of producers who have, who have been involved and, and clips are on the record and people know about that. Mm -hmm. And getting those two back together, you know, creatively, we know that they have a relationship, but getting them on record, it, it could only be in this project, right? Yes, that, that's everybody's, what they say, oh, this is the only one. That that's the only one. No malice would come and rap on. Correct. Yes. Correct. So can you just talk us through the process of, of putting that to him and, and getting that to a, to a place where clips reunite for this project? Mm. It was just beautiful. I mean, I had, uh, they, they were out here, like, or out working on an album just... Five months ago, I remember saying, I'm not even going to rap. And then, uh, no You were matter. serious about that. You weren't yes. interested in rapping. I didn't know how to rap for God. Mm. I didn't, you know. So I remember No Malice being like, I'm going to write you a rap for this. You going to rap on this? He said, like, I'm going to write you a rap. He didn't say you're going to rap on as a paraphrase. Mm. He said, like, I'm going to write a rap for it. And, and he yeah. must have been over, you know, he must have been euphoric. Mm -hmm. At the idea of you being able to identify with what he had he had established for oh, himself. Absolutely. Yeah. He just sent a verse over right now, the second verse for this song I'm playing you with victory mm. on it. A song called Glory. He just sent over a second verse idea. So yeah, as you see, we're finishing verses tonight. Mm. And writing still writing new stuff. Mm. Uh absolutely. Like, this is such a win for the kingdom. For Kanye to come back home from going from Jesus Walks to I Love It and to say, I give it up to you, God. I tried it my way. It's not working out. Hmm. It's not working out. I got, you know, everything is in shambles. I'm ending up in debt. At least I'm seeing, you know, all we're making this money, but I'm still ending up in debt. My, my public standing is all in shambles. I'm, you know... I'm not in I'm not in good shape. I'm I'm having ups and downs with my health. Um, people calling me crazy. People not wanting to sit and meet with me. This all this has happened. I had to just give it all up to God and not use any of you know the tactics. You know, even like when I say, oh, Bernard's my new Drake and all this kind of hotlines or whatever. It's like, no, we gotta go in and say that it's all in God's hands. It's just praying. When you pray, things don't always happen exactly when you want them to happen. Then it's in God's time. It's not in your time. And God may have you suffer to use you, to show you something, to show someone else something. It's God, why do I have to suffer? Why do I have to go through this? Mm. But it's a, bit, it's a part of a bigger plan. So. And where does that leave push? Push is coming along, but I can't speak. I can't speak on his journey mm. and his walk. But he know. He knows God is real. You know. There's there's things where people know God is real, but the tangible and the physical things are so in front of us. And Cuddy on Reborn, yeah. which is mm. an important moment of kids yes. see ghosts, right? Mm -hmm. That's a song that ultimately set you on the path. Even though that record came out, you were still on your way to Chicago to denounce Jesus. The interesting timeline for that. Yeah, it's it's interesting that it's reborn because Cuddy's not Christian, and I wasn't. And you were. And yet that yeah. song was almost a declaration of. Yeah, I, you know, eight months. In I don't advance. know if it's. Seven, I think I was on the path since I was born. God yeah. always had me on this path, and you know, after surrounding myself with Sunday service with. All of these God-fearing, God-loving people singing. You know, I, I really had a, a luxury uh, sound wave treatment to show me how God is so good. And I was led with light. And it's funny because God led me with light to him. But then I'll turn around and be screaming at other people that are not in the same place in their journey. You know, pointing fingers and being judgmental. And you're over that now, to a degree. 
I'm still human. I still hurt. I still get mad, but it's interesting. Just, no drugs in the studio? No alcohol in the studio? Can you be around that stuff? Oh, alcohol, but yeah, no. Uh, but some people, you know, have a medical condition where they have to smoke weed. Mm -hmm. And you're okay with that? Well, yeah, you're saying what do I condone on a property and inside of my studio mm -hmm. specifically? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm early on into the walk and I believe that there's certain things that haven't been defined completely. Mm. But def I mean, we never have people doing hard drugs in our in our studios yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway. We never I've never seen someone do cocaine in a studio of mine. Mm. I never seen anyone smoke crack. I never seen mm. anyone do heroin. But pills are a friend of heroin. They're, it's a oxycodone, it's an opioid. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember, you know, having surgery and then having the painkiller. And then after the pain was gone, I'd still be popping the pills mm. and maybe taking mm. more than one. And the feeling, that thing that set off, it's a similar feeling to uh, when you climax. Mm. So that shows you why sex is just as much a, a powerful drug as an opioid mm. or as heroin. Mm. So when you saw me at the MTV Awards, the year after my mama had passed, that was like if I was a heroin addict with the needle, mm. a heroin addict with the needle coming out of my arm. Mm. Like I don't really care about living anymore. And I just thank God for saving me uh, physically, mentally, spiritually. Yeah. My last question is mm. um, at this point in your life, at 42, and being a man of faith, serving God, hmm. spreading the gospel, have you been able to find peace with the challenges of your life that you didn't bring upon yourself? The loss of your mom, the exposure to pornography at a young age, the things that set you on your path that you've had to process Yes, I'm at peace. It's, it, I give it all up to God. It's sometimes we'll sit around and start to get mad about something or I'm, you know, about to scream about something and I'm rude. You know, I had a rude, I have a rude spirit and uh, I had a rude spirit that I need to work on. Grace, a lot of people, there's things that they need to work on. Man, I am like just, prepped to be a Christian. You know how you get stereotyped, you know, somebody that's tall and say, yo, do you play ball? It's like, you just take everything about my personality, but like, oh, you will make a perfect Christian. But don't you want to hold on to some of that fight? Isn't that fight needed? Don't but, you need some of that fight in you still? Like well, that? What is the, the fight? Yeah. Just because you're a Christian don't mean you ain't got fight. I mean, and the you, rudeness, let me be more specific. Well, that's what I was about to say. The thing I pray for to be more Christ-like is the grace. Mm. It's, it's I have to pray for grace. And then as God strengthens my hand, is to have more grace. Like we as human beings inside of the game of life do, there's an there's a ability where I might be slightly upset about something later today. I pray not, but doesn't seem to go about two days without me getting something new to be, ha, ah, I'm upset about that. These are like new challenges that we're at with life. It's complete, the landscape has changed. We're out here taking you know, meetings and doing partnerships on building factories and building our own farms. And in these new challenges, there will be things you're frustrated about. It's like if you went to different levels of the video game. Mm. Like, I'm less frustrated about the snare or hi-hat. I've been doing that so long. I call up Manny Merrick and I call up Mike Dean. We have our production staff, everything, we got that completely under control. I don't have any idea, you know, of how. You know, I have an idea, but I don't have experience mm. doing the things I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And in that experience, there's going to be some cuts and some bruises, mm -hmm. but I'm ready to go in. It's one of those like jumping in the deep end things. Like if you knew how 
you know, difficult certain things were, you might not jump in to be able to receive, be able to receive how rewarding they are on the other end. And we we in the deep end. We always stay, we stay in the deep end. I'm not shallow. I'm deep. I'm like, everything's gonna be in the deep end.